Hi guys, Ben here from 100 N Man. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about flexibility, why the mind needs it, why you need it, and how it can help you not only in your sport in the event itself, but also in the training in personal life. So, flexibility, and I don't mean in the physical sense, so in the metabolic sense that allows you to either touch your toes or reach further than that of your competitor. I'm talking about the mindful flexibility, being able to react in a way that best suits and supports your ability to develop, improve and complete a lot faster and wiser and with knowledge uh, than that compared to your than your competitor or if you're in a non-competing sport and doing it out of the enjoyment to utilize flexibility as something that's going to allow you to enjoy the journey a lot more. I talk about a lot during my uh, daily videos and have done over my daily videos certainly over the last 45 odd days about how important it is to stick to the plan. Now I'm talking about a Ironman triathlon specific training plan that gives me guidance on what I should be doing on what day to allow natural progression throughout the 100 days. And of course that is essential. It's essential in the fact that I want to finish the event. I have no aspirations to uh, come in at a particular time. I want to finish. I want to hear those words, you are an Iron Man. So I've released any kind of time restraints, time pressures uh, that would be associated with a competing athlete, someone that has a time that is working to the point tenth of a second, that is looking to cover the extra distance, that needs that additional strength, mindful strength. In releasing any of the pressures and remaining flexible in my approach to my training, but still sticking to the plan, what it does, it changes the mindset completely and opens up space for criticism, learning, experience and knowledge. Because if you think about life and those things that are most successful and those things that last the longest, such an oak tree or something like that, they remain flexible through the storms, through the good weather, through the bad, through the droughts scarred by the past but continue to develop evolve and work around their the environmental factors you know a tree will grow through a gate despite it being cast iron a tree will utilize the strength to fight the storm and i think a lot can be learned from nature and applied to sport applied to life because there, there's great sayings about the spice of life is variety. And I think that's true in every sense. And I think it's closely linked to flexibility and flexibility in sport especially. Because training programs become or can become repetitive. And the way that you're able to go about and change your training plan or utilizing your training plan as a pro, non-pro, non-competing athlete to your advantages is to look for ways in which will in, uh, your training will inspire you. Now, if you are a competing athlete and you are trying to shave off those tenths of a second off your, your training plan, you will know that the, the slightest changes will make the, the biggest differences. And the closer you get to those tenths of the second, the harder it becomes uh, to hone in those skills and to alter those the specifics of your training plan. But I've got a different spin on it. My spin is that if you were to alter just one aspect of your training, for example, a marathon runner, and incorporate a element of your training that wasn't part of the norm, wasn't part of the standardized training program that others would follow, and incorporate a higher element of enjoyment, then I believe that through the mindful shift, it has a 
altering effect on the neurology and your ability to work that much faster and harder. We all know that when we're committed to doing something we enjoy, we tend to give it our all. You know, whether it's a DIY task, whether it's a, a hobby. But I'm not sure the same could be said when it comes to chores. And, you know, some would see gardening as a chore, whereas some would see it as a form of enjoyment. Those that see it as a chore, find it a struggle, generally won't finish the project to the best or highest standard possible. Whereas those that see it as a hobby, as enjoyment, actually will go beyond what generally is acceptable, beyond the boundaries. The same concept and the same thinking patterns can be applied to sport. All the time that you're enjoying it, you tend to give it your all. You see a gradual and increase in improvement at a lot faster rate than when you start to hone in to the specifics. And I think not only does that have or is based on the effects of the anatomy and the biology and genetics and a number of other factors, but also in the shift where an element of that enjoyment actually starts to disappear, that the focus becomes so much on you know, achieving that faster time, that greater strength, that the distant memory of enjoyment actually becomes no more. And I think when you get that back, and when that is achieved again, what happens is, is the, the progressive curve will continue. Maybe not as much, but certainly it will return. And when we think about it, and as I mentioned with the tree a moment ago, we have evolved to be flexible. You know, we adapt to different conditions, environments and demands. But what we have done is forgotten to listen to the body forgotten to listen to what we want, the original reasons. And this can happen in relationships. And when I mean relationship, I'd simply mean the connection between two things. Relate-ship. The, the ability to communicate using communication as a vessel to deliver a message. The communication when setting out on a journey generally is particularly good. But when you become lost or confused or there's some diversions, sometimes that communication can produce barriers, resistance, struggles, further challenges. So I guess what I'm saying is, if you are at the point where achieving that next level is becoming a struggle, you're meeting lots of resistance. It's time to be flexible again. It's time to think back to when things weren't so rigid, where things had an element of flow, where there was flow within the moment, where you were able to perhaps, and I hate the cliche of think outside of the box, but you were able to work outside of the box, where rather than a strict road 10k session you had the choice to incorporate a bit of track a bit of trail running still covering the same distance and still achieving the the heart rate zones and working to the figures but perhaps incorporating a bit of scenery mixing things up a bit there's enough restrictions in our everyday life to be applying that same concept to our sporting activities of course, this could be completely different if you're a pro athlete. But you're a pro athlete because you enjoy the sport. You enjoy the moment. You enjoy the victories. And the more you harness in on that, that victory, that thing, whatever it may be, that winning moment, the more you focus on that and feel the elation within the body, the more you return to that flexible way of thinking. Thinking beyond just that training session, but enjoying that moment. And there's a lot to be said for enjoying the journey. You know, I'm an advocate for that. Why go and do something if you're not enjoying it? Why commit to a situation or 
an environmental factor if it's going to make you feel anything but happiness. Some people say it's not achievable all the time. I would probably argue that point. You know, happiness is within the mind. It's not necessarily reflected in the external environments. External environments are based, or what you see the external environment is based upon your own beliefs about what you're seeing, about how you're interpreting that external environment. And the more that you communicate better with yourself and the more that you remain flexible in what you're seeing, the more you're able to progress, change and develop behaviours that support your end goal. So, flexibility. The mind needs it, you need it. It's an important tool for you to develop and enhance and move forward and progress. Flexibility can be more than just altering your training, but it can be the mindset that enables you to improve your behaviours in all aspects of life. So that's it for me, for now. Be flexible, look beyond the immediate boundaries and restrictions. If you've liked the podcast today, then please share. Please leave a comment below. Let me know what you want me to be talking about. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe. For now, peace out.